Each puzzle represents the immigration of some group to a North American city. The presence of the conquistador tells us that this puzzle image involves Spanish immigration. Conquistadors reintroduced horses to the New World, so it makes sense that he's on horseback. St. Augustine is the oldest continuously inhabited European-established settlement in what became the United States, so it's the obvious city to choose to represent Spanish immigration into North America for a treasure-hunting book written in English. The Spanish immigration clues documented in this section are optional in the sense that they don't help us locate the cask. Knowing that these clues weren't essential to the solution, I believe the artist John Jude Palancar chose to paint them very subtly to make the puzzle more mysterious and challenging. If you have difficulty seeing any of these immigration clues, don't worry about it. The clues that lead us to the cask will be much easier to see. The Spanish first encountered indigenous Floridians when Juan Ponce de Leon's 1513 expedition encountered Tamuquins along the northeast coast of Florida. This first encounter is represented in the puzzle image by two face profiles showing a relatively dark-skinned Native American face-to-face -face with a relatively light-skinned European. Later, in 1539, Hernando de Soto led an expedition up the west coast of Florida where he encountered Calusa and other tribes. The book mentions the fair people from Spain encountering these same tribes with this quote, to the southern shores where the Iberian Hadas were greeted by the Temuqua and Calusa. As we'll soon see, the remaining immigration clues paint a very dark picture of Spanish colonialism, making it clear that Byron wasn't a fan. The first dark clue is a right hand and forearm raised in a defensive position visible in the clouds behind the conquistador. The second dark clue is the Grim Reaper, or Angel of Death, following the conquistador on horseback. The curve of his trademark scythe forms one segment of the pennant. The third dark clue, which I've only been able to see in a high-resolution photo taken when the painting was on public display, is a snake head at the tip of the pennant. Zooming back out, we can see that there's a whole snake present and that its back half overlaps the Grim Reaper's scythe. Largely stemming from their role in the book of Genesis, snakes in artwork are widely recognized as symbols of evil and deceit. The next two Spanish immigration clues are optical illusions that are considerably harder to see. It took me weeks to train my eyes to see them easily. They're a pair of large overlapping dog images represented by the foreground rocks. Squinting will probably help you see these overlapping optical illusions. The first dog is a Spanish Mastiff with black and tan coloration. These sunglasses are intended to help you see the Mastiff's head in the rocks. Because the two dog images overlap, the sunglasses help you focus on only one dog at a time. If this Mastiff optical illusion pops for you, you'll see a dog with this rough outline. For comparison, here's a photo of a real Spanish Mastiff with a slightly less upturned snout. The second dog is a wolfhound looking directly at the viewer. If this dog was wearing sunglasses, they would be right here. If this wolfhound optical illusion pops for you, you'll see a dog with this rough outline. Here's a photo of a real wolfhound for comparison. So, what do mastiffs and wolfhounds have to do with Spanish immigration? They are two of the most common breeds of Spanish war dogs. Bred over centuries of intense warfare in the Old World, Spanish war dogs were among the most fearsome weapons employed by conquistadors, particularly in Central and South America. These dogs of war were used to control indigenous populations. The most famous Spanish war dog, Becerillo, was a mastiff owned by Juan Ponce de Leon, so these clues have a direct tie-in to this puzzle. However, because Spanish war dogs were associated with many atrocities, their use had fallen out of favor with the crown by the time St. Augustine was founded. The book also references Spanish war dogs in the same context as Florida, Conquistadors, and the Fountain of Youth. It's also likely that the name Devil Dogs used later in the book is another reference to Spanish war dogs. Before we leave the topic of Spanish war dogs, I'd like to address a commonly asked question about the significance of this bird-like shape. This shape is present to support the two dog illusions. It forms a significant portion of the left ears of both dogs. I'm not aware of it having any other significance in the puzzle. The conquistador's odd posture and downward gaze are consistent with the overwhelmingly negative theme of the other Spanish immigration clues. Either that, or he's looking at his cell phone.